write down every, every, get a receipt for everything. Um, we, we, we complained about that, and the next time it was plus or minus $500. And now it's plus or minus $5,000 or $6,000. Now they don't care. You see, because they realized the value of, but they never understood the value of money and the free floating of money. The first time I ever tried to give a tip uh, to a lady in, in, in North Vietnam, it was like I insulted. And the second time, it was not an insult anymore when they understood what we were doing it was a generous gesture for, for services rendered. So all of these small things that we talked about must be understood. Uh, they've been corrected and they've been dealt with and people understand a lot more and they're reacting to it and therefore the economy is growing. Mr. Kung, is communism still the principal form of uh, ideology in Vietnam? Do you still believe in communism? Mm, that's what I can hear. You do? Yeah. How does, how does a free market that you're developing here, uh, how does that mesh with communism? Does it work? I think that uh, only communism can, you know, that bring a uh, good light to the people. So the objective is that we try to find the best way. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we are a communist country, that we uh, ignore everything. In, in the past, we, I mean, that not only Vietnam, but other communists made a mistake to ignore. We made that the market law. So now we apply it to into, so that we, we think that we have been successful uh, and to apply every market law that you already did in the Western country into the communist uh, countries. Looking at the Saigon River, and on your screen now is the old presidential palace. Mm. President Chu and others used to live in this presidential palace in what was then known as Saigon. I guess that you can call Saigon, Saigon today. It's just a part of a district within Ho Chi Minh City. And I market, the Andong market, yeah. which uh, we were... There's one being built in Hanoi, too. You see the one that built by the Thais? With Thai architecture, right down the, a big, big marketplace being built in Hanoi. What you're seeing here is an in independent initiative on the people who are allowed uh, the opportunity uh, to begin a life after having uh, not much of a life for a long period of time. And it, it'll happen in the Soviet Union as well. It'll happen in Eastern Europe. But they will learn lessons from the Vietnamese. You see nobody starving here. You see all. You see a tremendous. Uh, look at this. is a vibrant economy. I've seen it go from nothing to to the, the to this. What I'm saying is it has no basic government control. And if you don't have the proper controls and taxes in the government for the infrastructure, you have chaos and you have a problem that such as the Chinese have. This is the message that we are trying to get across to the Vietnamese, that you must study the effects of a free market economy on what you're doing before you have a chaotic situation developing, such as you have in Thailand. We were told, by the way, that there are three million people in Hanoi and four million people in, in Ho Chi Minh City. Is that accurate? I think in Hanoi, uh, more than three uh, million, but in Ho Chi Minh might be uh, seven millions now. Mm, uh, coming yeah. up to, to six or seven, there's yeah. 70 million people and, and uh, uh, people are coming back into the cities because of the economic opportunities and that's a problem. We were also told that there were about 500,000 Chinese Vietnamese that live in this area, the Cholan district. That's right. Is that correct? I don't mean that the number is correct, but I mean that a lot of people, of Chinese, Vietnamese, are now living there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have, some of them have returned in the last year. Mr. Kung, where is your family from originally? Are they all, are they Vietnamese originally? Yeah. Not from China? And no, no. From very, very, you know, that native Vietnamese in the north and very beautiful name in that town. That, and, yeah, and a lot of people. Uh,
Again, Mr. Dalton, we are seeing a lot of American goods. We saw Ovaltine there, M&M's, uh, and then some uh, Spanish beer. There's Head and Shoulders, Head and Shoulders shampoo. Jergens? Mm-hmm. Uh, again, uh, I, would, I would say that this is done to some, uh, uh, some method uh, having to do with uh, third countries. I really don't know. I've never been interested in how things got there. But I will tell you this, that... Uh, it shows the entrepreneurship of the, of, 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 the, of the Vietnamese. It shows the capabilities to, to face up. The Russians, for instance, wanted to eject the Vietnamese from various uh, parts of the Soviet Union because the Vietnamese went to Vietnam, worked very hard, bought up all the products on the markets, and then sold them back to the Russians at twice the price. When I asked what happened to all of the war material during the war, I went up in Quezon, I said, what happened to all of this material? He said, we sold it to the Japanese, and the Japanese made Toyotas out of them and sold them in the United States for the last 10 years. So we've paid for this war 15 times over. And all I'm saying to the United... And, the, and we don't look too smart, economically, to people in Southeast Asia. And essentially, to somebody who's 4,000 years old, they say, these are nice people, but boy, they're dumb. We're looking at the Andong market in the Cholan district of... Ho Chi Minh City, where Chinese Vietnamese live and work and sell their goods. And this is a relatively new spot. As a matter of fact, I, this may be the only place in Vietnam where there's an escalator, a new escalator that was put in there when this building was put in the last uh, year or so. Yes, sir, I haven't seen that. I haven't been here yet. Uh, we want to go from this, by the way, to um, outside the Rex Hotel which again is in Ho Chi Minh City, in a hotel that a lot of Americans are familiar with. And look on that list there of where the companies are from. Japanese, Sumitomo, Singapore Airlines, the Italian Trade Mission, the uh, Korean Trade Center. You got the Hamburg office there, which is a German company. And uh, we looked around to see where, you know, countries were from. That, by the way, what you see there is the uh, it says the uh, floating hotel, and you're about to see that. Yeah, I didn't mean, mean to correct you, Mr. Dalton, but I was told by the people at the front desk there that this is Japanese-owned, but it spent time in Australia and was built in Singapore. Okay, and then, then I stand corrected then. I know it came from Australia, so I assumed it was uh, Australian-owned. Well, it supposedly sat in Australia and uh, for about a year before it was brought up to, to Saigon River. Mm -hmm. yeah, Mr. But, Kong? Yeah, but you know that I just have a talk with uh, an official from the UN. Yeah. much money and I, I, I this place was run down and and very run down they just renovated the hotel my price went up from uh, from the ten dollars a night to twelve dollars a night to fifteen dollars from inside the hotel along the corridor looking out toward the I believe that's that may be Notre Dame uh, Catholic Church mm. uh, be with the two spirals with the two spirals can't remember whether they said how many rooms were here or not. Mm -hmm. Something like the order of 400 rooms, I believe. You'll get the chance here in a moment just to look inside a room to see uh, what they look like. Uh, one of the things you notice in Vietnam, they don't use much carpeting. 
And I should ask Mr. Dalton if that's because of the 100 degree temperatures and the mildew. Mm, possibly so. I never never thought about it, but uh, you know that they make tremendous carpets. You saw the carpets that they make in Vietnam. Um, no, it could be economics. It could be just the fact that they, they, they don't afford them. Eventually, I think you're going to see it. And the newer hotels... Uh, this is inside Iran. Um, and the newer hotels... And I think it has to do with the cleanliness. They use tile because it's easier to clean, I would think, than carpets. You mean that why they don't use carpet? Why they used a lot of carpets in the north because of the, the, the weather. That's right. The mm. weather is the most important thing. Mm. But in the, in the south, I, I would suspect, and I'm just guessing, that it would be cooler to have a non-carpeted so non floor. That's right. Inside a bathroom in, mm. in a room, a hotel room in the Rex Hotel. Yeah. That's a shortwave radio where you can listen to the Voice of America or the BBC World Service. Yeah. You know, I stayed here. These are all upgrades. I mean, you can see that most of these fixtures are new. Some of these uh, did not exist in '87 when I went there. They were quite, quite run down. But now they. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether was Denton is uh, uh, after the last uh, trip to read a thing that now the Vietnamese people they, uh, I mean that they uh, before they like you know that uh, because of the other people don't like, don't think that the Vietnamese product is good. Mm. So, and impossible for us to, you know, that export our products like uh, mm. clothes and garment. Mm. But now we are able to, I mean that maybe you buy some Hong Kong or Taiwan's good products here. Mm. It, I mean that it was made, uh, they, they were made in Vietnam. No. I, but I, now the class that was taught by a woman who is the daughter of one of the National Assembly members uh, that we interviewed up in, in the north. And this is uh, Ho Chi Minh City University showing our crew arriving. The classrooms are along there on the right. Uh, there's no air conditioning. The, the, the classrooms are open. It's very warm, 100 degrees every day that we were there in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. And there you can see our crew, Greg Gursky, with the camera on his shoulder there on the right, along with Richard Weinstein over there behind him with the earphones on. And they are videotaping students who are learning about British literature. All of them speak fluent English in this class. And you can see one of the students there. And you'll get a chance to meet her and the other students in uh, just a moment. Before we take you to that, I want to close with the final remarks from our guests who are here in the studio with us and have spent uh, a good time. <coughs>